As we're heading out to the reef one morning to do some aerial um, shots of the of the Great Barrier Reef, um, you know, we came across this spectacular view, looking right down through the reef, all in its entirety. Uh, it was actually a cloudy day, but still the the aqua was just the colour of the reef was spectacular. And to think that in 30 years' time, this sort of uh, reef could be a danger is just horrifying. Yeah, while making our way out to the reef, we came across these four humpback whales doing their annual migration. Yeah, we were told about this heart reef um, and it wasn't until we sort of got out there that it's quite amazing from the air, it, it really does look quite spectacular. And in amongst this, this small reef that, um, well, resembled a heart. When we spoke to Charlie Verin, who just re released a book, uh, A Reef in Time, there was a real sense of urgency to his voice. He was able to, you know, paint a picture of what would happen should climate change actually have an effect on um, on the world's oceans. Yet Charlie was suggesting to us that the reef would be the last dominator fall should climate change make its effect on uh, on the oceans. He was suggesting even that you know it would be a an event that would be last seen 60, 60 what 65 million years ago. So. I mean, for me, it really, it had an effect on, on, on the, well, the urgency of it had an effect on me. Charlie gave us some photographs uh, that come from his latest book. Uh, these photographs sort of show the reef at its worst and at its best. And the contrast gives you some idea of, um, you know, what would happen to the entire reef should global warming take its effect. It only goes to show just how serious the locals are. The people from Save the Foreshore have made these billboard ads to let the passing traffic know about um, what the plans are for this area. As Suzette Pelt, one of the locals, she's been living here for like 20 odd years up in Airlie Beach. You know, this is, this is like a little paradise up here. And it seems completely, I can relate to what Suzette's saying, it's completely at odds to the area that you would put a, a shale oil mining uh, development in amongst this beautiful pristine landscape. Yeah, as we were flying over some of the test sites, you know, it wasn't very far away from these wetlands and you could really, you know, you could see the perspective of, of where these uh, mines were, where these mines will be, where these mines will be created and in relation to these wetlands. And the beauty of these wetlands is you know, quite spectacular. Uh, the thought that they could have some sort of effect on them is, um, you know, I'd hate to think. Steve Watson just seemed like one of those really level-headed sort of guys who wasn't prone to over-emotionalizing anything. So when he suggested that the effect on the wetlands could be quite devastating, you know, it really made me sort of stop and think. Yeah, well, cruising along the Proserpine River with Steve Watson, um, goodness, the amount of crocodiles that were on the, on the riverbank. You really felt like you were in a very natural environment. We weren't at a, um, some sort of theme park or, uh, but we were actually in a pristine environment. Yeah, we came across the straighted heron going through this sort of weird extended neck process as part of its uh, feeding. It was just on the banks of the Proserpine River. Well, the thing about uh, all the people we spoke to, including Tony Fonts, uh, the scuba diving instructor, you know, all these guys are sort of pretty, um, pretty ordinary sort of people. They're, they're, they're not um, radical uh, environmentalists. They're people that can actually sort of 
see that there is something that's going to endanger their uh, their livelihood and 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 the beauty of and, uh, and sort of pristine elements of this area. So this is what everyone comes up here for, you know, to get in the water, to see the reef, to swim amongst the fish and coral.